Greetings, brothers and sisters. So, um, I have an update to do, and I just want to say this. I added this. Um, I already completed the voiceover. So there'll be another greeting, all those things. Um, somebody sent me a message, said that I was quitting heartfulness. And I think that's a, a misunderstanding. I'm just having nothing to do with the organization. Like, and I, I don't know what I'm going to do from here. But I am just accepting the reality of my situation because, like, basically nothing's changed in terms of my relationship to the organization and everything else. It's just that I now know why it's the case. Right? <laughs> you know, I now am, um, there's no doubt in my mind about what I need to do and, and what's good for me and, you know, what's what's going to happen no matter what, right? Which is, I'm going to have no association with the organization. But that had already happened. I had no desire to return to India for a gathering after the last one. Really can't travel because of the the new rules and the masks and things and you know, all of it, right? Like I didn't foresee an India trip coming up and I don't have a desire to go there. And I get into the specifics of, in the voiceover. I just want to make sure everyone understands that the idea of quitting or not quitting is not, I mean, it's like, I, am I a part of it? Well, not really. Am I quitting? Well, not really. You know, it's not anything like that. I, you know, I'm still connected to the essence of the system the transmission and cleaning, I still believe in it. And so the organization is something else, right? The organization isn't taking away my belief in the transmission and cleaning or the effects of it and my gratitude for it and the good things in the organization that are still there that I'm not experiencing, right? It's clear to me that, you know, my whatever, like I'm on the outs, whatever it is, right? Whatever reason, my personal, you know, some scars and personality and then just the attitude of the mission and the direction it's going and dodgy. And so, like, you know, for me, it's just accepting what is, right? You know, it's like, so let's say you were in a relationship and, so like, some woman, you know, dumped me and I didn't accept it. I, well, I'm, I'm going to win her back, right? And then, like, you know, she remarries and has four kids and one day you realize, oh, yeah, that's not going to happen, <laughs> right? Like, it's like that. It's not, you know. Whatever, the, the old heartfulness, the old Saj Marg doesn't exist. And it went in a direction that I don't understand and agree with. And maybe it'll exist again in the future. But in terms of dealing with this iteration of the organization, it's been made painfully clear that anytime I get involved with it, it leaves me bummed out. I have no place in it. They don't want me. I don't want to be a part of it. It's a mutual, you know, mutual relationship. And, you know... I'm fine with it, right? So, like, I, you know, putting in terms of quitting or not quitting, I mean, was I even a part of it, like, before? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? How can you quit something that you're not really even a part of? And so, like, it's just me acknowledging, accepting the way it is, right? Um, you know, going through this last whatever it was. And so, yeah, I just wanted to make that distinction. I, I you know, I cover it quite extensively in this voiceover. All right, so that's the end of this introduction here. Greetings, brothers and sisters. So just a few um, leftover points to address. People left some comments, and there was a misunderstanding about um, the, uh, you know, what I was saying about the Journey series, particularly. The Journey series will go on. It's just not going to be focused on the um, Heartfulness organization. Right now, what's important for me is that, you know, my YouTube channel was being watched, my videos were being watched by people in heartfulness in India, mostly, and I was getting sucked into the drama there. You know, one of my sources who was, um, yeah, I told him, look, I'm, I'm privatizing my videos, I want out of this thing. And he said, well, people will think that you've, they've gotten to you. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, like I said, I don't care what people think, right? I don't have to, you know, I mean, I, I <laughs> and that's probably as big an issue. People here understand that, right? People who are my, you know, longtime viewers that watch um, most of the rest of my videos, I don't care what people think, right, about this stuff. I mean, I guess, you know, some 
small degree, but that was not even a factor in my decision making. Caring what people think, especially people there who never really cared about me or, you know, don't care about the channel. They're here for these specific videos, which, um, you know, whatever part they played and whatever, you know, when you have information and in like truth or information, it's kind of your responsibility to at least try to tell a few people, right? Your loved ones. I mean, whatever it is. Like, you have inside information about... Well, I wouldn't call it inside information because we don't have inside information because we're not inside. But we understand things in a, a deeper way than the majority of people. At least some things. Because people get overly um, impressed by their own knowledge of uh, a, a situation that's so vast and so, you know, dysfunctional that we can only, like, get a hint of the depravity, right? But what I've learned in the truth community, which I already knew all too well when dealing with the heartfulness thing, knowing the information and thinking, oh my God, once everybody finds out or once, you know, there's going to be a, like some sort of a, a change, right? And something's going to have to be done. And people will be like, oh man, we got to do something about this, especially for the heartfulness organization because of what it stands for and what it means for so many people who do it. And I knew that wasn't going to happen. Like, I mean, it, people just don't change, right? Somebody uh, sent me a, a meme that they made. Let me put that in here um, so everyone can see it. Kind of funny. Um, but, you know, organizations don't change. People don't change. And like what this person said about, um, you know, saving face, it's, you know, there's a big cultural difference here. And... There was a comment from somebody I read last night, which I'm aware of. She said, I went out with an Indian guy in Sydney for 10 years. I learned that it's impossible to talk straight or confront issues as there's a huge thing around losing face. This is the convoluted system of dealing with conflict. It's a head spin. I, I didn't handle it well. And there's just this... Um, you know, this need of, well, don't bring shame on the family, right? Uh, don't bring for shame on the mission, or, you know, you don't bring, you know, whatever it is, it's so much more. That was, I was talking about intertwined and all the, you know, the heaviness of the social system and the cultural system. In America, it's a lot easier for a, you know, person, even a pastor, you've seen all these TV evangelists that come forward and admit they made a mistake. And then, you know, get redeemed, right? But that just didn't happen in different cultures around the world, specifically the Indian culture. People have been can't getting canceled for forever. But, like, it can affect your family for generations. Like, you're the shame of some act that your ancestor did. Like, it's... Um, and then just, there isn't a directness, right? That's why there was a reaction to my videos, there's just not a directness there. And they don't, you know, um, because when I said that, you know, we should start a truth community in India, you know, years ago, somebody said, oh, they'll kill you, right? And, you know, it's just a, the people are so much softer there. And the country's so much more, more peaceful and like mature in the different ways. You know, like the, like the, the energy that's there um, in the, you know, whatever it is. I was like, you know, really, <laughs> you know, and, but see, it's because they're, you know, losing face and like keeping, um, like if there's a mistake made, like the brighter minds thing, there's no saying, oh, we made a mistake. Like they'll just keep on going with it. And, you know, this is what's happening. And as Americans, we're almost opposite culturally to India. Like, I don't think there's a more opposite in terms of the two cultures between Americans and Indians. It's always been a problem here in the United States in terms of the mission. And it just, you know, I mean, it's a problem in Indian families because the Indians that grow up here, the Indian kids, I mean, they're so much different than their parents. It's just, and they don't understand each other and it's, you know, frustrating. And so, uh, Master Charji, he, uh, you know, there was only, I think, um, 
maybe one marriage between a an American guy and an Indian woman, and that like ended in disaster. That guy's now a like uh, he's got his own little site um, for like uh, you know anti Sajmar carefulness site, right? Like that's how bad that ended. <laughs> um, and so the cultural differences are quite uh, quite um, obvious. And they have been to me for a while. Uh, and then there's just the greater sort of guru culture stuff and all the rest of it. But but for me, what I got out of this thing is, you know, I've tried my best to do things to better the the organization, right? Like they owe the organization something. Like I benefited from the organization. There's still the good part of the organization that exists. It doesn't exist for me because I'm not, I'm not, you know, connected to it. But it still exists. There's still the, the people who just go out and do their service or whatever. And so the organization has benefited me. And, you know, I would have wanted to contribute something positive to it over the years. I mean, I guess I did a little bit. Um, but, you know, I haven't been able to and they haven't ever wanted me to do it, right? They haven't, like, wanted my services or whatever. And now that ship has sailed, right? <laughs> like, you know. And, you know, for good reason. And I was aware that if I worked with the organization, I would be bumming all the time, like I couldn't function. I would be just stressed and preoccupied. And that was happening, like, for about a month when these things started to... When, when I felt people watching the videos there, when people from the organization from India started to show up, I could feel a stress and a you know, I was getting sucked into something. I didn't really kind of was conscious of it, but like I, I, you know, knew something was happening and it was starting to, you know, where I would be like, I'll have these conversations in my mind when I'm walking and, you know, when my wife and I were walking, you know, we, I wouldn't be as attuned to just being in the moment, enjoying the walk or doing whatever. Right. I mean, that got worse over time to where it would, was stressing me out all the time. And, you know, I was sleeping. Okay. I had a couple bad nights of sleep, but like when I woke up, like I say, I woke up early and I was still tired. I'd pop right out of bed, ready to go because I was, you know, it was like I was, um, you know, agitated in some way. And, you know, today I was able to sleep in a little bit and I needed to sleep. And so, you know, it was starting to affect my blood pressure, my whatever I've talked about this in my other video. I've had some like... Uh, it's could be either some like pre-diabetic reactions at times, uh, especially after the Omicron, and then some weird heartbeat stuff from COVID. And this summer was my health had just you know was as good as it's been in years. I mean, before COVID, it's consistently got better. I'm taking supplements and I just feel better. Um, but then my heart started, uh, you know, and it was when I would lay down to go to bed. And it would start racing. Like, I'd feel fine before. But as soon as I lay down, that's how COVID was. Whenever I lay down with COVID, I would have trouble breathing when I had the first COVID. Laying down when sleeping was, you know, like all of a sudden anxiety producing, which sucks because, you know, sleep is a good thing. So, you know, I was starting to see stress. I was becoming more preoccupied. And I wasn't being able to attend to my videos until um, the end of the day like my regular videos for my regular viewers. So the viewers that, you know, there's an audience here that that needs to be, I mean, people who aren't entertained by the the Journey series, sure, but, you know, other people, they're, they're not into that. So, um, and that's, you know, it's a business and, you know, it's everything else. Plus, when I was making, like, humorous videos, I wasn't in a good mood, a joking mood, a laughing mood. And so it's hard to be, you know, do the, the joke, you know, the more... The, the humorous videos, which is the fun videos to make. And a lot of people come just for those, you know, lighter videos because I was just, you know, preoccupied, stressed out. You know, I had this, um, uh, this you know, home shopping stuff I wanted to do again, which I released this morning. I made the video last night, but I wasn't in a good enough mood to make it, right? I have to, you know, be in a kind of silly, laughy, you know, kind of whatever mood. Uh, so that was all, you know, happening because I was engaged with something that I wasn't going to change it, right? I was, you know, intertwined with, um, you know, the organization, but more more the people and the culture there. 
and and you know it's the it's the dark side the you know the the really frustrating side of the culture and there are people who are just watching my videos and hating me and you know sending bad energy towards me which i could feel like i you know for a while i could feel it and you know it's just wears on you for no reason there's no reason for it because they're not here for they don't understand me or the channel they would never you know be here for the the reasons of like why someone would come and watch my videos and there's obviously a lot of hate and anger now in the mission brought in by a lot of new people and new policies and new whatever is going on there there's just a lot of um you know people who are more focused on the you know the the problems and you know venting their their inner you know poison on people i mean this is a problem there in india which i'm you know people are reporting to me that there's a lot of people who like don't get heartfulness and, and size marg and a lot of the literature isn't there for them to read so they don't have any access to the character development stuff like they just there's and even if they most they don't really read the books anyway so there's no one teaching them that right and with you know whatever happened with this package thing the if it was sent some threatening thing and i still got to figure out what to deal with that it was threatened a threatening thing sent to me um then the mission gave the address to these whoever sent it right or it came from someone you know in the organization that had access to my address so there's you know that level of trust is gone for me you know for a while back uh, because that happened before with preceptors giving my wife's address out so i mean you know there's a level of dysfunction now in the in the organization that like i'm you know i was aware of before but now i'm like all right um so my my feelings about all that is the transmission is flowing the cleaning is still working sittings are being given which are the primary function of the organization and as long as that exists there's hope that it can rebound from this right you know this is like a dark period for for size mark right there's a difference now between to me between heartfulness and size mark somebody sent me a, a video and um Mr. S was there giving a talk to the, you know, to the people at Kana and saying, you know, raise your hand if you're a heartfulness Abiyasi, raise your hand if you're a Saj Marg Abiyasi, and everyone raised their hand for both. But there's a fracture there with the people who, uh, who are, you know, have been here for a while and they're freaked out about what's going on and they think of themselves as Saj Marg practitioners, the old name. And then there's people who are the heartfulness ones, right? So there's a, there's a fracture there. There's, you know, I mean, all the things that I sort of covered and alluded to. But, you know, the organization is going to go through this. And then whatever happens, you know, we'll see when there's a shift and a change in, you know, leadership or whatever it is. But, you know, there's two more points to this. You know, I knew this for a while. I just um, didn't think it was possible. The stuff that I realized about the organization you know, and dodgy to whatever extent. I mean, just it's been there for a while, you know, and it was, I mean, there was like, when my family and I went to, um, went to um, the gathering there, it just wasn't as good. Like, I was kind of bummed for my wife because I wanted her to have, you know, a better experience. And, and it wasn't as good in terms of the, you know, the transmission and cleaning were there, but it wasn't, they were like less, um, I don't know how to put it, right? Like, no matter what was going on, you know, there's, I've had bad experiences at gatherings before. Getting sick, some kind of drama. I mean, there's not, it isn't a vacation, right? But at the end, I would just be like, oh my God, I feel so good. You know, I would leave feeling just, what I would feel spiritually was substantially better than anything I could imagine or I had anticipated when going, even though I had experienced it before. And I didn't feel that when we left the last gathering in India. I was like, wow, that was kind of not like a gathering. It's, it's not like the same. And when the guy got up, Diaper Baba, and we were completely, everyone was just completely unprepared for it, and he just hijacked the microphone. You know, it's after group meditation. This guy gets up, he starts talking in Hindi, and you know, it's a, like a big giant screen, so it's like some kind of 
you know, big brother. And the other thing was Dodgy shared the stage with other people. So usually the master would sit in a chair by himself and transmit, and the preceptor, same thing. They, there they are transmitting, but he there's people sitting with him on the di- dias, the DS, or whatever it is. You know, and this was sort of how the YouTube videos were going at the time, where it would be Dodgy sitting there, like, as, you know, with other people, having conversations, you know, not being in the, like, the, the per, uh, being the, you know, the master is somehow elevated, right? Like, you know, in the system itself, like the master is the master of the system. But he was sitting there with, like, these people, like, they were all equals, and they weren't sitting, you know, facing him to receive the transmission. It was like they were all transmitting, you know, and there was a special, I mean, there's a whole, it was the inauguration of the ashram and the 75th anniversary. So there were some things there, you know, it was like a big, you know, sort of event. Um, but I didn't understand that and, and some of the other decisions that had been made, like it was, you know, and I didn't know it was out of humility or whatever it was, right? Um, but this guy got up and hijacked like two hours of the crowd's time. It was just went on forever. We left. It was still going on. And everyone who I saw was like, what the hell was that, right? And it was dancing around, you know, the the diaper baba reference. And we were like, wow, what's happening here, right? And um, it was like when Hartfield sort of like jumped a shark. Like it was one of those jump to shark moments, right? <laughs> and, you know, as I look back at it, like I didn't know it as the time. Um, at the time. And so, but, you know, the gathering, but things that happened before and just, I was like, you know, what's going on here? Things that were happening on an organizational level. And so I've known for a while, but, you know, what was written in the whispers of the Brighter World messages about, you know, I mean, the things that were written about Dodgy, and these are, you know, a lot of these were somewhat recent. You know, they were uh, after Master Chargy passed away. And, you know, what happened with the succession, all these things. It was, um, I was viewing that one way and now I'm viewing it as a, another, right? Where there was some sort of, it just wasn't clean for some reason. And um, there are some, uh, you know, related issues to it. And the mission is kind of lost its focus of what it's supposed to be, right? There's a lot of things that are not consistent with the teachings and, you know, all of those things. Um It sucks, but, you know, it's something that it has to go through. It's just, this is, you know, something the organization has to go through. You know, Babaji and the whispers of Brighter World messages have said that the organization is going to go on for years and years and years, right? Um, I mean, you know, maybe a thousand years. And it's going to take different forms. Like, it's not going to be the same organization. There might be fractured. I think, you know, there's one reference that that there'll be a person that brings the, all the, like, the different, you know, subgroups, all the different, like, it's just going to fracture into groups. You know, as long as transmission and cleaning is happening, the, the main services are there, right? And then someone's going to reunite all the groups. Like, there'll be a master that comes that's, um, you know, reunites it into, a, like, one organization or something. Um, so, like, I don't know, like, what's going to happen. And I, at this point, don't really care. Because, you know, I've known what where I am now in regards to the organization is where I've been for a while. I just now understand why that is, you know, <laughs> like it's just better for me. And, you know, they'll still do the sittings. But, I mean, my days of going to India are gone. And that's, you know, that was sad before. But now I've accepted it. And that's sealed off. Like, you know, I mean, given the the hatred that that people have for me. Plus, I, I don't want to be like a known entity. Like, I want to blend into the background. Like, you know, that's been my whole life. I don't want to be, you know, somebody who's, everyone, oh, there, there's, there's that guy, right? And I've been that guy for a while, um, you know, and not a, and, and uh, not in a good way, too, so it's even worse. <laughs> oh, there's that villain over there, right? And so that's how the organization's seen me for a while, and that's, you know, for some people, of course, now not that's not the case, but, you know, I mean, it's not the organization as a whole. But either way, you know, I have been pushed to the periphery and, you know, and now it's a lot more, uh, you know, I can see how, why that's such a great thing because 
for the past month, it's affected me in a negative way, right? And nothing of it, you could say it's cleaning, but the difference here is like, you know, going through a cleaning is well, something that's cleaned out. And then like, let's say you go to a gathering, you go to an ashram and it, and the process invokes a cleaning. But once the cleaning's over, you could be at the ashram, right? You could be with a person like, you know, who maybe agitated you and, and create a cleaning. But with the organization, it's like I'm always going to feel the way I felt the past month when I get involved with the organization, right? Like I'm always going to feel that way. And I couldn't count on the organization doing the right thing, the spiritual thing, adhering to the principles and teachings of the system, and just to do the right thing. Like I just count, can't count on the organization to do that anymore. Um, and so, you know, if an adversarial situation escalated between me and the the organization, I was already thinking about ways to, you know, take the organization down, right? And that was like, well, that's not good. You know, when I thought about it, because I go for walks and I'm like, you know, as being a heartfulness practitioner, the organization could be around for, you know, like I said, thousands of years. And so, um, <laughs> you know, I don't want to wreck something just because it sucks right now. I mean, in terms of like, you know, if it got labeled as a cult or whatever it is, right? A terrorist organization because of the behaviors that were exhibited. If it gets into the American legal system and, you know, it's viewed that way and it would bring shame on the organization in India. Like it would, you know, these, it would reverberate, right? And then it would be, I mean, you know, whatever. Like they're, and they're acting in a way that they don't realize that that's where they're headed to where there's going to be some scandal either here or somewhere else where heartfulness is going to be where heartfulness is going to be viewed as, uh, by the media as being, oh my God, there's some sort of dangerous cult. Like that's, they've entered into this kind of territory and they're not even aware of it, right? And then, you know, the shame that goes, like I said, the, the bringing shame on your family or, you know, a whole country in this case would be, you know, devastating to the organization. I don't want to be any, you know, any part of that, right? If they're going to self-destruct, then I don't want to be there for that. I don't want to be, you know, a catalyst. I'm not going to help them with that. I'm not going to root for it, right? I don't want to, you know, be in a, a situation where I'm, you know, celebrating their, you know, whatever it is, right? Like if that happens, you know, it's just a, it's a bummer to go through. It's going to be a bummer really. And it's just, you know, the sadness I've gone through and the, you know, whatever it is, the different negative emotions with the, you know, this experience. But now I'm, you know, more aware than ever, I mean, there's been times, you know, as being ostracized or whatever, where I was upset and I'm like, well, why are you upset? This is better for you when, when you're being given basically a gift. And now I see it more than ever because I realize how I would feel if I was engaged with the mission, you know, even in just some sort of position. I mean, when I was talking to some of these guys, this one guy in particular who I think is a good person and, you know, and he was just like, I, I, I'm just thinking about this all the time. It's wrecking my condition. Like, he goes, I can't do it anymore, right? But his thing was to basically pretend everything wasn't there, which I don't agree with. Uh, but, you know, it's people, they're all experiencing it in different ways. And it can just wreck your, I mean, you could just be miserable forever, like just all the time. And for what, right? Like your misery isn't going to change anything. It, you know, I mean, there's divinity that's at the center of the system, which is a transmission. It's connected. It's watched over by these beings called the divine hierarchy. And this is just, you know, I'm hoping it's part of a plan. You know, like, I don't know that anymore. Like, uh, you know, maybe something just went wrong and this is it. Like, it's, it'll fade away and it'll just be like every other sort of religious movement become a religion you know, we don't know yet. People say, well, a lot of people say, yeah, sure, that's exactly what's going to happen. I'll just be like, no, but nobody knows. Like, you know, um, at least in, in this uh, being on planet Earth, I guess if you were, you know, etheric being, yeah, it'd be different because time's different. Um, but from, you know, our point of view, is this is where it is and it's going in the wrong direction and, you know, it'll play out whatever way it plays out. But what I realized yesterday, I just want, 
you know, these people who aren't fans of this channel, who aren't really ever going to understand this channel, and are coming from, you know, heartfulness off my channel. I, you know, that's why I did what I did with the videos. The videos will be available to my audience at some point, you know, and I'll just, um, you know, but it won't be like, you know, out there for the heartfulness people, at, you know, at large. And, you know, they were just watching parts of the videos. They weren't watching the whole thing because they don't want to listen to me, right? You know, the one guy who was a source was speeding up my videos, right? Because they're not fans of it. They're not fans of my channel. They're not watching my other other videos, right? Because they're not interested in that. There's a cultural difference here. And so they weren't my audience. Like either the people who were watching it because I agree with them and it looked like I could serve a purpose in their agenda. Well, that was, you know, why they were here. And I was, you know, aware of that. Like they were just here for, you know, I mean, in some ways using me and my channel for their, you know, what they think should happen. Like they have a point of view of what needed to happen. And I knew that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> I'd been through this with the truth organization. I knew that there wasn't going to be anything that would change the situation, right? Um, you know, because I've been through this. And, you know, even more so with this organization and this culture, because, you know, the the change would have to come now through losing a face. And, you know, and that just won't happen. I mean, dodgy. You would have to, you know, admit something that would, I mean, cause, you know, reverberations throughout the system and the culture there and, you know, and so, I mean, that's just not going to happen. Like, it's not, um, it's not culturally acceptable. And the haters were just watching whatever they were watching to, you know, there's people who want to get riled up. They want to get, you know, uh, fire and brimstone people in every organization. And these people were, you know, like this guy said he was in this chat room because they just want to, you know, villainize somebody because they have to have a villain. They have to, that's what they have to do. So I don't want any of those people on my channel. I'm not going to be used in that way for some, you know, object, objectified for some, you know, role that I have to play in their, you know, in their, you know, imaginary realities, right? You know, their, their reality that, is so different from my reality. And so, you know, that was starting to weigh on me, the the reality that was, you know, now on my channel. This is my channel. This is my place of work. And, you know, it was being used by all those people for their own issues. You know, and people who have made mistakes, it isn't my job to point it out, right? It's their job to realize it in themselves. You know, when you make a mistake in heartfulness, you're supposed to see it in your meditation it's supposed to wear on you until you fix it. Like you don't need other people to point it out in the external world because you meditate. You, you know, you go inside and God's saying, hey, you effed up here. You got to do something about this, right? And that's happened to me over and over again where, you know, I, I have to correct something that I did wrong, right? And like you have to, you know, um, there's an action that needs to be taken or at least there has to be something done internally to correct something like that's what how heartfulness is supposed to do is is help you see the things that are you know that your that your character flaws and things that are hurting your ability to move forward spiritually and that's what meditation and the you know everything are supposed to do your external world isn't as important as what you know to be the truth inside yourself or what you think is the truth and i know from past experiences i mean here certainly for years in the truth community but also um you know, working as a counselor, people don't accept it when you bluntly tell them, this is your problem and you need to change, right? Like, you know, it never works. Like, I've never seen that work. I mean, there's some people who are desperate. Like, if they're, you know, completely, um, you know, broken in some way. So completely, I don't say broken, but they, um, they're freaked out, right? If somebody... Like almost like ODs, for example, and the people around them and the person themselves are like almost almost died, right? And you'll see people for a while give up their addiction, you know, like a, a near death experience, or a doctor says, "All right, you know, you're 
you got, you know, early stage lung cancer or your, you know, liver's done from drinking or, you know, you're whatever it is, right? That you have organ failure of one type or another. You got early stage cancer, whatever it might be, right? Those things will change people. You know, when you're, oh my God, like, you know, people change their lifestyle and behaviors and things, you know, but it's a crisis that happens, right? And so, you know, a crisis can create that sort of change when people realize, oh my God, like this is, you know, like, like it's something that shakes someone up and rattles them. Yeah, then when you talk to that person, you say, look, this is why we've known this for years. There's a, you know, there's a window where the person's defenses are down and they're desperate and they're scared. They'll be open to hearing the truth about themselves. And then that window closes. I mean, you know, for some people it's worse than others. And some people the window even doesn't even open. They're not even, you know, even under desperate circumstances, they're just, you know, they have like a committed to a death wish and they're just going to move forward with their, you know, wrong behavior. And so, like I've seen this over and over again, it, you know, getting people to change the best way is the heartfulness method way, which is you meditate and you see the issues for yourself and you can't, you know, you can't blame somebody else. You can't shoot the messenger. You can't say, oh, it's um, somebody else's fault. The person telling me about the problem, they're the problem. You know, the person outside here, they're the problem, right? You can't blame the external world for your problem because you see it inside yourself. And then you're like, oh, I got to change this. Uh, you know, this is something inside myself, right? You know, like for me in this thing, whatever need I had to be, you know, whatever little small need that was there for me to be a part of the organization is gone. Like, so, you know, I guess in, in that way, it's a gift what I went through. Whatever, you know, I mean, whatever things I had about the purity of the organization or, you know, just all these things that would make me think it, you know, I could help change it or, or whatever, right? Like now I have no interest in any of that stuff because I know what it's like. I know what its effect on me and I know that it won't make a difference. And so, you know, me giving up on it is, you know, it's like some part of you dies, like, you know, a good part, right? Some, you know, like just some, I mean, innocence, like, you know, it's part of my innocence is dying, you know, <laughs> you know, and I had such enthusiasm and, and positive energy when I came into heartfulness and which is really to me now Saj Mark, right? You know, now I'm a Saj Mark person because if there's a difference between the two and I'm in one group or the other, um in the periphery of the and the Saj Mark people are already in the periphery. So um and so that's just what it is, right? But you know, like I you know, I, I now know that what I was seeing all along and was hard for me to accept and, and, you know, I was in sort of disbelief about it was, was true. It was, you know, I was being prepared for the, you know, the inevitable acceptance of where the organization is and it's just not good right now. And I'll get in more details later on. Like I just, right now, the big thing is I just need a break from it all. And, you know, all the people that were here before will be gone. Like they're not watching my videos and it'll fade away for whatever reason. I mean, the reason is they're not my audience, right? The reason is they're not here for the reasons that this channel exists. They're here for whatever's going on on their end in their lives and their drama. And, you know, I mean, when I was put in that stupid meme and all these people are commenting on the meme, what they thought it meant. <laughs> people said it was computer generated. And I'm like, no, they're, that's like a, a meme you'll see in India, right? It's like, you know, the, I don't understand what this meme means, right? Like, um, and so, like, they'll understand, but, like, they didn't understand how it, it appeared to me and probably didn't really care because they're, you know, these are people who aren't coming forward themselves and are going to use me as, a, you know, like a shield because, uh, you know, I'm going to take all the, the negative energy, right? Because they're not willing to come forward themselves. And so, you know, that's not cool. Like, how is that any better than the other side? Like, how are you different from the other side? Like, the manipulation, the, just all these character issues and stuff. You know, and the thing is that what this commenter said, I have known for a while, you know, but the comment um, about, you know, not handling conflict directly. 
and not be there's just this I you know I, I can see it right now when I'm talking about this I can't put words to it but everything is done you know indirectly passive aggressively and it's it's so hard to deal with like I just when I was in India it just bummed me out you know Americans we you know we have this just being you know more uh, more direct right I mean, as, as much as you might be frustrated with Americans not being direct, it's way more than you'll see in, in other countries in India. They have this whole other social way of dealing with things, right? Master Chargy gave this talk about how, like, a husband would properly be able to let his wife know that the, there wasn't enough salt in the food. Like, you know, I mean, and it wasn't saying, hey, there's not enough salt in the food. <laughs> that was not even close to, you know, it was really interesting hearing him describe it because he was describing the cultural issues, right? And how there's just more subtle. They're not, you know, there's no direct. I mean, my videos were very direct. That's why they're reacting to them that way because they don't do that. That's why they're flipping out, but they don't understand that, you know, this is a multicultural organization and they've never tried to understand the other cultures. And the, you know, American Indian Abiyasis here haven't tried to understand, you know, they, they just retain their culture and they, you know, they dabble in some of the American holidays and things, but they never really embrace it. Their kids do, but they don't, right? So that's why there's been such um, stunted growth and, and just frustration between the Americans and the Indians in the organization here. And they're sweet people, most of them, a lot of them. And so it isn't that, it's the you know, it's just living two different realities and dealing with things to like two different ways, like the, almost like complete opposite ways. And so it's just, you know, there's there's no happy uh, middle or medium there. When I dealt with these guys to do with the UN and then multiple uh, situations that I described in my last video in dealing with Indians when I was in India over things like this, I would be like, just answer the effing question I asked directly. We're not going on some roundabout way that, you know, when both of us know what happened, happened, right? Both of us know what's happening is happening. We could talk about the thing that, that we're, you know, dis in disagreement about. And there's this roundabout way, right? And, you know, we're, there's a, you're, you're not even agreeing on reality, you know, the reality of, of what's there in front of you. So there's just a growing frustration with all that. And so whatever lingering things that happen here, you know, eventually I'll be forgotten about, which is the main goal for me now. Like, I just want them to not be thinking about me on either side. Like, I don't want anybody there thinking about me or the, you know, whatever. Like, they all know the issues, right? And, you know, I came in there and brought some of the issues to light, and it was for the betterment of all those people, right? Like it was something um, that would have been helpful for both sides. And, you know, they'll never value it. I mean, it's something where they could look at it like, oh, this is a gift from God. But the one side wanted to manipulate and take it in the direction, you know, the people who liked my videos there wanted to take it in a direction that they thought it should be taken in, right? And they wanted me to involve me in some way, and that wasn't cool. And they did it without my permission or any of these things. They didn't, you know, they weren't grateful for the service I rendered. And I was specific about it. And I was trying to communicate this to them, the ones I was in contact with. And they just wouldn't hear it. They weren't listening to me. You know, this is what I do here. This is my channel. And this is what I'm willing to do. This is what I'm not willing to do. This is what the way I, you know, this is, you know, my purposes and, you know, for my channel and my, you know, personal, uh, you know, devotion and, and um, you know, work duty, work, work for God, you know, my whatever godly work I'm doing, whatever, whatever service I'm rendering for, to this case, the mission, and, you know, whatever I do here, right, that's God's work. This is what I'm willing to do. This is what I've been asked to do, right? Nothing more, you know, nothing less. And it's up to me and my relationship to God. It's not what you want. It's not the way that you want to perceive it, right? And so that was where I was like, you know, especially with the meme, but I knew this already. They wanted to force me to, to be what they thought they needed, right? And that's, you know, in the videos and all the rest of it. 
to a, an end that I knew wasn't going to happen. They have some imaginary scenario that isn't going to play out, right? Um, and then the other side, they could look at it like, wow, we've effed up. And this is just, you know, which is the way the heartfulness person would do, right? A heartfulness person would realize that I was the messenger telling them you've effed up in a way that's not consistent with the heartfulness teachings and you got to fix it, right? But they're not seeing it that way because they can't, like they're not, you know, that would mean admitting their, you know, bringing shame on the mission and the, it would just destroy their, on a cultural level. Like admitting the problem, admitting that they screwed up, right? Like I think maybe even getting sucked into the brighter minds thing was that, you know, Dodgy got sucked in by a kid maybe, you know, believed in it, and then it was too late to say, oh, my God, I made a mistake, right? And so a lot of this is could be just about saving face. Like, I, I don't know, you know, and I don't know what would even lead to that kind of decision in the first place, right? But it's his mistake to fix, and it's not mine. And none of these things affect me. The Brighter Minds program doesn't affect me. I mean, turn on a, you know, only in the sense that an organization I love is doing things that I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's going in the wrong direction, right? So, I mean, that part, but I mean, I'm not in the organization. I don't talk to anybody in the organization. I don't have any relationships to anybody now anymore. I'm not, certainly not going to be, the Brighter Minds thing isn't going to affect me at all personally. These decisions aren't. You know, what I've done is I've unfriended and unfollowed and unsubscribed from all the official heartfulness stuff. So I don't have to see it anymore. Like, you know, I mean, why am I looking at it? You know, this is what I say to, to people who view my videos who aren't fans of the channel. Why do you watch the videos so that you can feel bad? Like the videos and the heartfulness stuff almost always makes me feel bad. Like, I always go, oh, my God, they're doing this. Oh, my God. Like, I don't, you know, I, the whole direction that they're going is not for me, and I don't agree with it, and it bums me out. And I don't want to be bummed out. Like, so I, I don't care about it anymore. Like, it's not, you know, I'm on the periphery of the organization or not even really in the organization. I'm just doing the transmission and cleaning, right? I might buy some books at some time, you know, or something, right? Um, but other than that, like, I don't need to know about it. Like, it's not, you know, I can't change it. And, you know, I have to accept that I don't know how it's going to play out. And when it starts to play out in a more positive way, then sure, I'll be more interested in seeing it. But they don't want my help. I'm not, you know, the YouTube videos aren't for me. The Heartfulness YouTube videos aren't for me. I don't like them. Why should I sit through them? I don't agree with what's being said. The way the videos are made is horrible. Uh, the whole channel, it's just, you know, it's its a bummer. And the things they post on Facebook and all these things, when I look at them, uh, I always get bummed out. Like, you know, very seldom do I see something. Like the trees thing, sure, I like the trees. You know, I like the agricultural stuff, right? But, you know, I mean, I was there, I experienced it, I already know that's there. You know, and my wife and I, we were doing this permaculture design course. Um, you know, we want to build a food forest. And, you know, I, I mean this has interfered with my life, like just all of it. And so I have a very specific role here to play. And that's to talk about, you know, the things that are spiritual in nature. And I can talk about the transmission and cleaning, because those things are available to people without having to really deal with the organization, right? I can, you know, I can say the organization's not great. And, you know, I mean, so, you know, maybe a little bit stronger than that. But the services are still great. The transmission and cleaning are still flowing, right? So many people are here are benefiting from it and don't want to quit. So, you know, and if you find a good preceptor, there's plenty of them. There's like good parts of the mission. If you can access those parts, you know, like I used to, you know, and then you totally should, right? I mean, if it's helping you, like it's just not helping me. And I don't have access to those parts of the mission. And so like I just, um, if I don't think about it or know about it, then you know, and it really isn't a part of my life, then there's nothing, you know, for me to say about it, right? But let's say you have a family intervention. Let's call my videos an intervention. And you do the intervention and the person says, okay, I see that you care about me and, you know, whatever. Um, and I, I know I need to change. And, you know, if the person's desperate and the right conditions are there, sure. But other than that, 
the person leaves pissed off and hating you and you're the problem, right? And it fractures your relationship. So, I mean, and that's what's happened here. So, you know, I, I did my part. Like I, you know, I said what I needed to say. Like I had information to give to Dodgy and the organization. I sent him the voiceovers and I, you know, said my piece. And if they, you know, want to villainize me, then, I, you know, I'm not playing that role. We don't have a relationship. We didn't have a relationship really before and certainly not now, right? And so I don't need to just keep on talking about how bad it is there and how bummed out I am about it because, you know, that's counterproductive. I don't want to have a relationship. That's me engaging with them. That's me, you know, that's them wanting to hear what I have to say because it's about them. Like I'm just, you know, engaged with it, right? And so, like, that's, you know, that's counterproductive for me because I don't want connection, and I don't want connection with these people because of, you know, there's no connection there. There's no positive relationship. It just will end badly, right? They don't want to hear what I have to say. Like, they, you know, in general, all my videos, they would look at the videos, not understand them, and they would never be fans, right? There's some people from India who are fans, and maybe a few people, you know, who are lurking, who are heartfulness practitioners. Yeah, sure. That's great, right? I mean, they're, they're like me. You know, they get me. They get the whole thing here. There's some sort of shared agree, agreement of reality, you know? <laughs> but for the most people there, they would never be that. So, um, like, I don't, you know, they're not my audience. And so, like, that, I mean, that is the essential piece to this thing, right? There's no real connection there. You know, when we would go to gatherings, we were told, okay, you... For example, when you sit, you don't point your feet at people because in India, that's like a sign of disrespect. Um, like you just, you know, the, you, you don't wear shorts, or short skirts or something, right? But this was America. We go to America. I can understand saying that before you go to India. But that was America. But I would see Master Chargy, for example. He would read something. He'd be pointing at it with his middle finger. And it would look like he's giving the finger to the crowd or, you know, or whatever it is, right? And he didn't know because he's, you know, or maybe he did or whatever, but wasn't, you know, whatever it is, right? So, like, for them, I mean, sometimes they would point with their middle finger, right? Um, so, you know, we were supposed to be aware of their cultural issues. But there wasn't, I mean, and I know Chargy was very aware of other cultures, so it's not like he wasn't, but... You know, they really never um, understood American culture and the way that we express ourselves and things. And, you know, I mean, it's there's just it's really hard to communicate because of the indirect communication and the bluntness on one side and, and the Indian side and the bluntness of com the way we are in America. Right. Um, and so, you know, I'm always going to be blunt in terms of this YouTube channel. I mean, in terms of what they think is blunt. Right. Like, sometimes I'm more, you know, subtle in what I say here. Uh, but, you know, they, when Babaji used to correct somebody, he would look at not the person he was correcting, and he would say something very subtle that he hoped the other person who needed correction would hear. He wouldn't say, oh, you have a problem, I'm going to do this. And he'd say it in a very subtle way, and he transmitted, and, you know, so he had a, you know, he didn't want to hurt people's feelings directly, and, you know. In America, we're very confrontational, and, they, you know, they're not. So, um, and they are in a different way. So, you know, basically what I'm saying is I want to go back to the way it was before, um, which is the only way this channel can function, I can function and do my job, is to go back to, you know, people who understand me and the, the channel and are, you know, fans of it. They, You guys want to hear what I have to say, right? And I guess, like I said, what the good thing is for me is, like, now I know. Like, now, like, doors have been closed and, you know. <laughs> like, I'm not, you know, thinking it's ever going to be different, right? This is the way I'm going to conduct my abhyas, my spiritual practice, you know, on the periphery or not really a member of the system or whatever, you know, doing whatever online. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm engaging in the online stuff and, you know, my personal practice and, you know, but in terms of the, the organization itself is, it's basically non-existent to me and which is fine. Like I just, it's, you know, it's better for everybody. All right. So that was the update and I'll, you know, I'll, I want to get to my, 
my story about the turtle and some of the other things in my personal life, this, you know, this whole thing hijacked the journey series. I want to get back to the journey series and in a sense of, you know, how this plays out for me, you know, now in this new sort of reality where the organization is not really a, a part of my experience, right? The, you know, the, you know, it is a little bit with the app and things like this, but what it's like for me in terms of my own personal spiritual journey and things. Anyways, so that's the update. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramano, definitely important for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.